Hey, I'm Jay Cohen. I'm a photographer in Westchester County, New York, and I'm going to take you along today on an architectural photo shoot, and I'll show you how I process one of the images in Photoshop. Uh, if you do like this video, it does help the channel if you give me a like, and if you like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future videos. Let's get started. Good morning. I am standing in a cemetery in Westchester County, New York. And I came to shoot this small chapel behind me. You can see it's pretty cool. And I'm going to do a long exposure. I got some nice, interesting clouds above, and I'll capture some cloud movement. Let me just get uh, set up and we'll get started. So I originally discovered this chapel, this structure behind me when I was driving down the Bronx River Parkway, uh, minding my own business and out of the corner of my eye, and I'm always looking, scanning the road for interesting subjects, but corner of my eye I saw this chapel and I made a kind of mental note that I needed to come back and shoot this uh, on the right day. Luckily it's only 10 minutes from my house or less, and so... Uh, Made a drive back and pretty interesting, I think. So, love these clouds up here. Nicely defined and they're moving slowly across the sky. So I am doing a long exposure to capture that cloud movement. To do that, I am using a neutral density filter. I started with a 10 stop ND filter, but I really couldn't slow down the shutter speed enough, so I added a separate filter. You can see here, I don't know if you can see it, I've stacked two filters, one 10 stop, one six stop, and so I really darkened the scene. That allows me to go out to a good minute and a half at this point, and it's really capturing some pretty cool cloud movement. You know, I did shoot at this location one other time, uh, and that time I had much better sun, much better light. Here's an image I got there. You could see the uh, directional light really added something to that image. So after I put on those neutral density filters, I had to figure out what the uh, shutter speed should be. So you can do trial and error, but I did use an app that comes uh, for your phone by Lee. That's a Lee filter. So Lee puts out this app that uh, if you get the right exposure without the filter, it'll tell you what the exposure should be with the filter. I still do some trial and error, but generally it's a great place to start. Well, I'm just getting a different perspective on this structure, this chapel. So I move my camera much closer in and I'm looking kind of straight up as you see. So I'm hoping I get something that's kind of dramatic and interesting, but uh, we'll see when I get it on the camera. I got very lucky with the cloud formation because uh, these, uh, these white puffy clouds with a little bit of definition as they come across the sky are creating some really interesting streaks and they're forming a really cool pattern, kind of a fan shaped pattern. So uh, these could be pretty good. So I pulled back a little bit and I'm trying to get, I'm using a wide angle lens, I'm trying to get this structure with part of the railings 
And I kind of like those walkways back there as well on either side coming out. Now you got hills and trees above the walkway that I find very distracting. And so I'm going to probably get rid of that in Photoshop and get a nice clean image of, uh, of this chapel, these railings, and the walkway. We'll see how it comes out. Well, that about does it for me. So I'm gonna head home and get these images on my computer. If you're really into Photoshop, stick around. I'll show you how I process one of these images in Photoshop. Uh, if that's not your gig, that's cool. Leave it here. And uh, if you like this video, it does help the channel to give me a like. And if you like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future videos. And until next time. Well, that was a great morning. I love this subject, and I got really lucky with those clouds uh, moving above the building. Um, I'm back on my computer now, and what I want to do is show you how I turned this image into this image in Photoshop. Uh, I've done some work in Lightroom already, uh, converted to black and white. I brought up some of the shadows, added a little bit of clarity, but really not too much. And while I love this composition, uh, the light is a little flat and there are some distracting elements. And I'm going to deal with both of those in Photoshop. Uh, remember, there's a lot of ways of doing the same thing in Photoshop. And so if you know a better way of doing it, please put a comment down below. This is just kind of my workflow that I'm comfortable with. I have already made a number of selections. Uh, the sky, pieces of the building, uh, the railings, and I did that using the polygonal lasso tool, which was relatively easy. Most of the lines here are straight, but again, there are other ways of making selections. This is just my preferred method. Uh, and I save those selections by you know, making the selection. I go up to select and hit save selection and think of a name for it. Um, and now I can load those selections and use them. Um, the first thing I want to do is get rid of some of the distracting elements. Um, before I do that, let me make a copy of the background layer. I'm on a Mac and I use Command J as a shortcut. Uh, there are some sensor spots that I can get rid of really easily. If I go to the uh, spot healing brush, so you can see them up here. There's one here. The next thing I want to deal with is the trees in the background. I want the viewer's eye to really focus on the architecture and I find those messy trees to be distracting and so I want to uh, deal with that. Uh, what I'm going to do is select the sky and you'll see when I do that my selection includes those trees and by making this selection I can really start to deal with it. I'm going to use the healing brush, not the spot healing brush, but the healing brush where I can sample another part of the image and bring it down to what I want to change. And so I really want this sky to be right down to uh, you know where those trees are. And so I can hit, if I hit option, I can sample it by clicking on the mouse and then going down here and essentially filling it in. And Photoshop does a really good job of mimicking the patterns uh, without exactly copying them. On this side too, I can hit uh, Option or Alt and bring it down and change it. And so you can see by getting rid of those trees, the viewer's eye really focuses on the building. What I want to do now is uh, work on the sky. Uh, I love this cloud movement, the fan shape. I mean, it's really just perfect. I couldn't have designed it better, but I want to uh, make it a little bit more dramatic. And so I'm going to go back to uh, the sky. Uh, sky. <clears throat> uh, and I'm just going to add some contrast. And to do that, I'm going to use a curves adjustment layer, which I'll be using you know, throughout this uh, process. And for any sort of contrast, you want to make an S-curve. You want to pull up on the highlights, the right side of the line, and pull down on the shadows or the darker pixels, and you get this really cool contrast. 
And so you can see here's the before, here's the after. Um, the cloud movement becomes a lot more prominent and those streaks in the sky are obviously more, uh, more clear. Um, the building itself, uh, I love these white spines that run vertically on it, but with the light being so flat, they don't really pop that much. So I can make them pop uh, with Photoshop. I'm gonna go and load the selection. I think I called it Total Spines. And you can see those marching ants around those, uh, those spines, the selection. Again, I'll use a curves adjustment layer. I'm gonna pull up to brighten up the selection. And you can see they really start to pop. And again, the light really would have been behind me if there was a proper sunrise. So it would have hit this building and caused these to pop a little bit more. In fact, some of the, the windows would have been brighter as well, at least the middle section. And so what I wanna do is brighten that up a little bit. Um, I'm gonna choose windows. Uh, you can see the selection I made. Again, I'll choose a curves adjustment layer. I'm going to pull up. That will brighten up the entire selection. But I really want just the middle section of the, of the windows to be brighter. And so I'm going to reselect. I'm going to use a gradient tool. Make sure my foreground color is white, which it is. I'm going to use a reflective gradient tool. So when I pull out from the middle, it's just the middle section becomes brighter. Uh, so you can see here's the before, here's the after. Certainly that central window, but even a little bit on either side of it becomes brighter. I can deselect, by the way, by hitting Command D on a Mac. And so here's the before, here's the after. It's getting there. Um, I like the railings that go out from either side of the building. So there's actually two sets of railings, but again, they are kind of flat. I want to add some contrast to it. And so I'm going to select um, inside rails first. You can see the selection I made and I want to add contrast. So again, it's going to be an S curve. I'm going to pull up on the right side, which would brighten things up and then pull down on the left, which will darken the shadows, and you get that really cool contrast. Uh, the outer railings, uh, I'm going to do that as well. I think I may have set, selected them separately, and so outer left railing, I'll do this relatively quickly. I'm just going to pull up on the right. You can see it getting a bit brighter, and pull down on the left to add the contrast. Uh, same thing on the right side. I'm going to load outer right rail. You can see the selection, get my S curve going, pull up on the right and pull down on the left. And so you can see here's the before with those railings and here's the after. Now there is a walkway in the back. And there is some contrast there because there are lighter elements to it, but you don't really notice it because of the flat light. So let me load that selection. I call this trim on wall. So I'm gonna make that selection. You can see what I selected. Again, using a curves adjustment layer, I'm just gonna pull up and that will brighten up that feature. <clears throat> Now, the last thing I want to do is there's this walkway in front, um, very flat, and I would think if there was some sun hitting the building, it might reflect back down and hit this walkway. So I want to add a little bit of brightness to part of it. So I'm going to load a selection, which I called it walkway. Uh, I'm going to use a curves adjustment layer, brighten things up a little bit. That will do the entire selection. Uh, again, I'm going to reselect and use the um, gradient tool. Uh, I'll use the reflective gradient tool again and pull out from the middle. And you get sort of this central section of this walkway that gets brightened up. Here's the before, here's the after. I did some other things as well, but I always like to end with one curves adjustment layer where I can pull up on the right for the entire image pull down on the left, very subtle, but adds a little bit more contrast and drama. And there you go, there is the final image. Um, hey, I hope you like this video. If you did, it does help the channel just to give me a like, a thumbs up. Uh, and if you like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future videos. Uh, and until next time.